just fell down. That's a nice pen, look at that. my last vlog before Christmas. Today is actually a week until Christmas Day, which is very exciting. I'm not ready, I'm not prepared for Christmas. I need to wrap a lot of presents, I still need to buy presents, and I definitely need to send Christmas cards, because I swear you were supposed to send Christmas cards ages ago, and I haven't done any yet. Um, but yeah, the reason I thought I would vlog today is because I'm going to be on live radio. So basically, a few months ago, um, I was contacted by someone like a producer at BBC Radio Nottingham and they asked if like I would help out and do a little chat every so often about gluten-free food, what's out there in the supermarkets, new products and everything. And of course I said yes because that's just what I love doing and what, what I know. I know too much about supermarket gluten-free food. It is a bit nerve-wracking but at the same time very exciting and this is my second time doing it because um, I did it back in November, which being like the very first time doing something, it was even more nerve-wracking and I, I will admit it didn't go as well as I'd hoped it would go, um, just because I wasn't completely prepared. But today I'm prepared. I know that the radio DJ, his wife is celiac, so it's quite sort of, he knows about this sort of stuff, so it makes it a bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited and we definitely need to get going quite soon because I've got to travel as I said, it's BBC Radio Nottingham, but I don't travel to Nottingham. I actually go to my most local BBC radio station, which is BBC Radio Suffolk, which is in Ipswich. And Ipswich is, like, just up the road from me, but still about a 20, 25-minute drive. And it's the morning, so the roads can be a bit busy. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm just... I just, I'm just... I've been preparing, so it should all go all right. And... If it does, I will pop a link in the description below um, so that you can go and listen to it because I'd really like it if people listen to it, if I sound okay. I don't really think I'll be listening to it back because I don't like the sound of my own voice, really. I say that as someone who vlogs all the time and records myself, but I really don't like the sound of my own voice. I don't think anyone really does. But, yeah, we, we definitely need to get going, get in the car and drive! Ipswich so that's what we're gonna do now okay so I get in the car and as you can hear by the fan the car is frozen I'm in a bit of a rush so this is a bit crappy Mark is now um, defrosting it oh it's not too frosty or too icy um, so hopefully we should be on the go quite soon but yeah like I can't just be late because then my slot on the radio will be gone and they don't care that much um, so <laughs> I need to make sure that I am on time, but are we ready now? Yes. We're ready. We're it, clear. it wasn't too icy, um, so I better stop and drive. Becky XL is a food blogger. She writes a blog called Gluten Free Cup of Tea and she's been on the lookout for the latest stuff to hit the supermarket shelves. Morning, Becky. Hiya, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Are you all set for Christmas then? You, you ready? Um, I haven't done that much Christmas shopping yet. I've been mainly um, just sitting in the supermarkets looking for all the Christmas food just so that I can help everyone out and that means I haven't done my Christmas shopping so I'm a bit, bit messed up really. Okay, well I'll tell you what, <laughs> we'll, we'll rattle through this and when we're done I want you to go and get sorted, okay? I promise, I will. <laughs> oh, okay, there's a promise, it's a binding contract. Yeah. Here we go then. Uh, so... <laughs> Pre 
appreciate your insight. Thank you. I wish you a happy Christmas as well, Becky. Thank yes, you, you too. Happy Christmas. And happy eating too. Becky XL, who is a gluten-free food blogger and writer of Gluten-Free Cup of Tea. There we are. My mouth is watering. Oh, no worries. Thanks so much. Thanks. See you soon. Okay, so that's all done. Um, I think it went really well. I hope I've helped people this Christmas in the BBC Radio Nottingham area. Um, and now, now I'm all done. Nice and quick, nice and simple, but it was good. <laughs> so I've just come out of my radio interview thing I do on BBC Radio Nottingham. Um, even though I'm in BBC Radio Suffolk Studios, um, it went really well. It was all about gluten-free Christmas. I think I recorded a bit of it, so hopefully you've seen a bit of that or you're going to see a bit soon. Um, yeah, it's just really fun and I hope I get to do more radio stuff because I did used to do some radio stuff when I was a little kid, like when I was about year nine. I used to do my own like online radio show um, with a few people. I forget that. Yeah, and it was really good fun. So I'd love to do a bit more of that, um, but we shall see. But yeah, it was really good and I think, I think it turned out well. So it will be on the BBC Radio iPlayer app for the next month, I think. Um, I think it's called The Mark Dennison Show on the 18th of December at about half past ten so if you want to check it out definitely do because I think it went well this time I never want to say anything about it until I've done it because I don't want anyone to hear me mess up live on the radio but I think it went good um, and it'll be very useful um, if you're looking for any gluten-free Christmas tips because yeah it was good but yeah now we need to get out of these studios because we're past the limit of when we're supposed to be here wish I could stay here all day I love the radio it's nice, isn't it? um, yeah, we're going to go out and enjoy the day. Maybe do some Christmas shopping, maybe wrap some Christmas presents, and maybe do some Christmas cards, because today is one week till Christmas Day, so I think it needs to be done. I really enjoyed it. We didn't even, we hadn't planned to go, um, but I had a very nice peppermint tea and the best thing about the peppermint tea was the mug it was in. <laughs> I, wa I want that mug, so um, yeah, I might just have to steal it sometime. <laughs> but they're not watching. No, I'm sure they're not watching. <laughs> the place was called Applaud Cafe yes. and it was really nice and they say they do gluten-free bread and cakes and stuff, so I think we're going to go back when it's lunchtime or something um, oh, and have a, have a cheeky, oh you can't see me at all. So sunny for Christmas and have a cheeky little sandwich. Um, but yeah, we need to get back to the car because Mark says that he's got a delivery coming for you, for me. Um, My so, last Christmas present. So we need to get back. Um, we can we can sit around and have a nice lunch. We actually just have to leave. Um, so yeah. Sorry about that. That's what we're gonna do now. We've just got home from Ipswich and I think it's time to do that thing that I just I put off. I usually put it off till Christmas Eve and regret it so much because on Christmas Eve I just want to be chilling out. Usually I'm wrapping presents so today as it's the 18th of December I thought I should wrap presents a week in advance, be really organised. I mean I've got more wrapping paper, like I've got all my wrapping paper sorted but I don't have all my presents sorted. Like I literally haven't even ordered some of them yet and I know that the time is ticking on online orders and I'm probably only gonna go into town once or twice more before Christmas. So it is a bit nerve wracking, but I've got some presents to wrap and I thought why not just get them done, get them under the tree, get them looking pretty. I mean, it makes a tree look nicer as well when there's actually presents under it, not just like dust and old bits of tree and stuff like that. So I'm gonna do that now. But I'm not the best at wrapping, I must admit. Mark is a lot better at wrapping than me. Um, whenever I get presents from him, he always makes them look really, really nice with like bows and this and that and all 
fancy, whereas I'm terrible and I'm gonna have to try my best today. I mean, I have improved. I've improved over the last like eight years since wrapping presents from up because I feel bad that mine are so terrible. So I always try my best to make them look nice, but I get bored after a while. So today, um, I'm just gonna wrap some and hopefully make them look pretty. Um, and yeah, we'll see how many I get done before I just get bored or fall asleep or whatever. <laughs> So we're done with present wrapping, aren't we? Yep, that was pretty tiring, but yeah. I'm so glad it's done. Well, I still haven't got all my presents yet, so... Well, we'll have another present wrapping session. Yeah, uh, I think that's necessary. But um, right now, it's dinner time. We are making um, spaghetti and meatballs, but it's kind of different because the, the meatballs are turkey. turkey mince. And plus we're making it all low FODMAP. Yep, all low so FODMAP. I've got some mixed tabs. Not we're, everything. We're getting rough measurements here. Yeah, because... basically... When I when I have to do my recipes and put them on my blog, um, I always struggle a little bit more because my sort of style of cooking and your style of cooking is very much chuck it in and taste as we go. Teaspoonish. A teaspoon of, of basil, basil paste. Puree. So how's your day been overall? You enjoyed? Really good. I'm actually really proud of you for your radio performance. Yeah. Because she, she may not let on, but she was quite nervous before. I wasn't her. nervous. I was Just fine. Well, not nervous, but you've you've got like. There's pressure when it's You've live. Got time pressures. So we use the Tesco garlic infused olive oil. I know some people say that um, they're not sure which sort of garlic infused olive oil you can use as low format. I definitely recommend this one. It doesn't have any like bits of garlic in it. It looks very clear. And obviously garlic infused olive oil is known to be low FODMAP. So this, if you're in the UK, I definitely recommend this one. I'll do my salt and pepper. So salting and pepper. Again, if you're wondering how much, um, I just cover it. Yeah. I literally just cover it. Um, so now we put fresh chives in. Right, lastly, I'm going to crack an egg. So put that I don't egg in. I want to put all in because they're very big eggs. Yeah, I always they're use... large eggs. I like to have large eggs for my baking. Okay, so Mark has randomly decided. Not randomly, I think he always does no, this. I, I make this recipe a little different sometimes. Yeah, I don't, I don't make this recipe. This is like Mark's thing. So it will go up on the blog at some point, but I'll yeah. have to call it Mark's Meatballs. <laughs> Mark's, Mark's Mark, Balls. Mark's Balls. Of meat. So now we're rolling up the meatballs. How long do the meatballs take in the oven? 20 minutes. Right, so I think this is getting a bit boring now, just watching Mark roll his balls. Um, <laughs> Everyone's so, loving it, I So know. whilst Mark rolls his balls... Oh, you said it again. Um, oh. <laughs> whilst what? Mark rolls his meatballs... Oh, thank you. Um, I think I'll get on with making the sauce and boiling that pasta up. So this is everything that goes in my pasta sauce. I've already got my passata, which I just use literally the everyday value um, Tesco tomato passata. That's all you need, isn't it? So I'll start off by just adding. I never realized we both cook like that. Yeah, so I add a bit of mixed herbs. Don't have any idea how much I add. Uh, I like to add a little bit of basil puree. I don't even know if it's a tablespoon. I just go like. Wow, so you're even worse than me. I go like that. Bit of a squeeze. I do like to add a tinsy little bit of garlic, because I think a lot of pasta sauces generally have garlic in them anyway, they so I do. add a bit of garlic infused olive oil. And they usually have olive oil in them as well. Yeah, so, so not much, because I find it makes it spit loads. <laughs> so then I'll just put a load of pepper in it, and i just put a little bit of salt in there, because obviously this is just like natural ingredients and stuff, just like there is, so there isn't any salt in it to start with, so I like to put a little bit in. I might add a little bit of tomato puree. I didn't know you added this in until today. I just do this sometimes. I never watched you do this. When I get a bit bored, I sometimes just go, here you go, have a little bit of tomato puree <laughs> And what do you feel about abs? Um, more tomatoiness, <laughs> I don't know. And then... Well, you can't argue with that. Mix that in. And then what I'll do, my pasta is cooking here, as you can see. Gluten-free pasta. pasta, that is. Yeah. Looks lovely and stodgy like gluten-free pasta always does, but it all tastes good. Um, so here we have some spinach. Um, which I, I have drained all the pasta now, it's already, and I'm heating up the pasta sauce again, spilling all the just spinach. Just thrown spinach all over me. Yeah, so I just put it in gradually, so... Do you put the whole bag in, eventually? Mm, no, it just depends how I feel. So there we go. Pasta sauce all done. It's making the lens a bit steamy, isn't it? It is. <laughs> 
Um, and then the meatballs are now done. Put the meatballs in, mix them all around. Yeah. Is, it, is it really hot? Oh, it'll probably be hot. Mm. Is it nice? Um, and then I'll just chop some chives in at the last minute because last then they, they don't really cook them. And then just mix it all in. And then you're done. Low fob map turkey meatballs with in a tomato and spinach homemade pasta sauce with gluten free pasta on a nice hot plate with some parmesan on top. That's what we're having for tea. That does look really good, doesn't it? That does look good. Yeah.